as soon you haven't even got your whole spill out about who you are yet and she is talking about i'm not selling my house you can't buy my house and they they tend to get a little aggressive with it right well, that's just because they've dealt with you know similar calls people trying to buy some scammers that sort of thing but the main takeaway from today's lesson guys is pattern interrupt and family and welcome back to another video in today's video we're going to be tackling something i know a lot of you have faced while doing your cold call sessions uh, i think it's really important to talk about this subject because even when i first started cold calling i used to hear this a lot and all i would do was freeze oh uh, i didn't have anything to say I, I didn't know what to come back with i didn't understand what i needed to do and i'm going to try to clarify and clear up on how to handle the situation when a person just comes out and says i'm not trying to sell my house i'm not selling you can't buy my house you know that sort of situation you see what's happening in this market right now is there are a lot of wholesalers who are calling distressed properties and just calling homeowners honestly to see if they can you know get a deal and try to flip it to a, a end buyer end user there's also people who just invest in property who are calling homeowners looking to, to buy property and you know flip it and make a dollar make it a rental that sort of thing so the market is kind of getting bombarded with calls from certain people you know you can get you can tell home warranties they're getting calls about their cars people want to buy their cars that sort of thing or even car warranties so people are a little bit on edge they have their guards up right so when you call saying you're a realtor the first thing that comes to their mind is I'm not selling my house right and the best way to really get over that hurdle is you have to stop them you have to redirect this and if you don't stop this they're gonna start talking about some stuff and it's just gonna go on and on until they hang up on you right it's gonna be a quick type of situation so you really have to interrupt that pattern and let them know, hey, I'm not trying to buy your house. So today we're gonna go over a few of my calls, let you hear how I handle that situation and how I'm able to then turn the call and still collect the email. So without further ado, let's hop right into this. Hello? Hey, Burton? Who is this? This is Mark Branson. I'm a realtor over here in Mansfield. Did I get I'm not interested in selling my house. Right there. How many times have you heard that? As soon as you haven't even got your whole spill out about who you are yet, and she is talking about, I'm not selling my house, you can't buy my house, and they, they tend to get a little aggressive with it, right? Well, that's just because they've dealt with you know similar calls, people trying to buy some scammers, that sort of thing. But the main takeaway from today's lesson, guys, is pattern interrupt. You have to stop that while she's saying it. Don't wait till she gets finished saying what she's saying. Interrupt her. Take control of the call. This is a, one of the only times where I'm going to really be like, hey, you need to really be assertive when you're talking to these people like this because you need to take back control of this call and listen to what I do. I'm not, I'm, not to, I'm not trying to get you to sell your house. Yeah, I was just giving you a call. I, uh... You see how I, I made sure that she heard me? Yeah, I'm not trying to get you to, to sell your house. When the prospect hears that, then they're interest is peaked right remember how we talked about peaking interest in all our other videos now the interest is peak okay well they're not trying to sell my house what do you want right and then i go ahead and go into my spiel i sold the house in the neighborhood and wanted to see if i could help you guys out with anything at all uh no sir i appreciate your call but no again that tone she's giving me okay no sir i appreciate your call though i'm trying to get off the phone basically right again this is where your transitions got to come in really strong right because again my pattern interrupted her we got her off the fact that i'm not trying to sell our house right then we told her why i'm calling she's still trying to get off the phone but then i'm gonna reel her in and kind of disarm her a little bit next so watch how we go well in the future if anything ever changes for you do you have an agent that you work with bam nice quick concise transition okay well in the future if anything ever changes for you do you have a realtor that you work with now she has to think about that. Okay, well, no, yes, it might be this person. No, no, I don't have no realtor, right? So now she's not thinking about hanging up on me again. She's thinking about, does she have a realtor? Very key. Uh, 
Uh, no, I'm not. I, I'm not interested in selling it. So no, I haven't seen no five. Gotcha. Okay. Well, hey, you never know. Maybe if the life ever changes for you in the future, say ten years from now, I'd love to work with you. Would it be a crazy idea if we stayed in touch? Hey, you never know, man. Life life changes. I mean, think about 2020. Huh. Didn't see that one coming. But again, I'm laying that foundation as to why I think we should stay in touch. You never know. Maybe you might want to do something five, ten years from now. Would it be a crazy idea if we stayed in touch? Huh. No, that's not crazy. Something might happen. I might want to sell. You never know. Well, you know what? I'll just... Okay, cool. Watch. Oh, not at all. Did you hear that? Oh, that's it? Serious, man. I'm telling you guys, it's about the tone, right? If you listen to my tone, once you start to get to a higher level in your cold calls, then you'll start paying attention to your prospect's tone, how they respond to you, right? This lady was just like, I'm not selling my house. Why are you calling me? Nope. But then I said something else. She's trying to get off the phone again. Well, okay. Nice to talk to you. Bye. Now she's like, oh, now in her mind, oh, okay. I've been being a little unreasonable with this guy. He's been nice the whole time. Nothing wrong. He's not trying to get me to buy or sell anything. He's just asking if I have a realtor. Okay. Okay. Well, here's what I'll do. If you have a, a good email, I'll just send you my info and then you just have it if you ever need it really really smooth transition and into that point again this is really important listen to this spiel take it oh okay okay well this is what i'll do if you have a good email i'll just send you my info and then you can have it on file if you ever need it that part right there makes it seem like okay well you know i'm not going to be emailing you all the time it's the under, it's the tone, it's what I'm saying, it's all the underline, I'm not gonna be emailing you all the time. What I'm gonna do is I'll just give you my information, so if anything changes in the future, you have it, you can call me, right? That's what's so key about this, watch how she responds. Okay, do that. Hello, okay, do that. We can just complete, you just, you just witnessed this person's entire attitude change in less than a minute. We've only been on this call for a minute. This, this call is a minute and 10 seconds long. Guys, if once you get good at this, it doesn't. you don't have to have 30 minutes conversations every time. I have long conversations on my cold call sessions. I have a lot more calls like this, right? I'm not trying to hold somebody up from their day. I don't know them. You don't know them, right? Now, get me wrong. Some people just like to talk, and that's when you engage more. But there's a lot of people who are kind of like me. I'm a straight, you know, straight to the point type person. Right, so hey, get to the point. Let them know what you do. Overcame somewhat objections, but the main thing is to understand the tone and to understand that pattern interrupt is really, really key. Okay, what's a good email for you? Uh, right, so now we're gonna move on to the next call and I'll show you how I do it again. Hello, hello. Hey, Jerry? Yeah, yeah, yep, yeah. yep. Yeah. Hey, this is Mark Branson. I'm a realtor over here in Forney. Did I catch you at a bad time? Hey, this is Mark Branson. I'm a realtor over here in Forney. Did I catch you at a bad time? Right? Again, I got that from Jordan Belfort's Straight Line Selling, right? If you ever watched that movie, The Wolf of Wall Street, and he'd do that iconic scene where he's, you know, in there cold calling. You mailed in my company a postcard a few weeks back requesting information on penny stocks that had huge upside potential with very little downside risk. Does that ring a bell? I had his class, right? He talks about this right here. It's the inflection on those words, right? Hey, this is Mark Branson. I'm a realtor over here in Forney. Did I catch you at a bad time? And the reason you're doing that is because it's the tone that's, I'm, I'm Mark Branson. You know me, right? I'm a realtor, right? Over here in Forney, right? You know where that is, right? Realtor, Forney, you know that's that. You know me, it's okay. It's a subconscious type of thing that he uses in a straight line, and it works like a charm, I'm telling you. Uh, I'm at work, I'm walking the job, but what you got going on, man? Did you hear that? I'm at work, walking the job, what you got going on? So we're gonna wanna skip, you know, trying to talk about the weather. We're gonna wanna skip that little, you know, hey, I'm just here at home getting some work done. How about you, right? We wanna skip that. When you can tell that a person is wanting, is like, if they say they're busy, if they even have any type of inkling that they're doing something and don't want, don't need to be on the phone, you need to get to the point, right? Okay, not too much, man. Didn't wanna take a bunch of your time. I uh, just sold a house there in the neighborhood and you know, wanted to see if I could help you guys out with anything at all. Uh, I 
appreciate the call, but no, I'm not selling anytime soon. Gotcha, you're all good. Okay. There. I'm not selling anytime soon, right? Okay, cool, cool. Transition time. All right, well, hey, in the future, if anything ever changes, do you have a realtor that you work with? Okay, okay. Well, would it be a crazy idea if we stayed in touch? Bam, bam. Okay. Well, in the future, if anything, you know, ever changes for you, do you have a good realtor you work with? Um, I don't. You don't? Okay, okay. Well, you know, hey, maybe five, ten years from now, I'd love the opportunity to work with you. Would it be a, you know, crazy idea if we stayed in touch with those? Maybe I can help you out. No, that's not a problem. Okay, okay. What's a, a good email for you? And I'll just send you my info and you just have it on file if you ever need it. Okay. It is J. Bam. Email close, right? Short, simple, sweet, straight line. So guys, start to think of these calls in a straight line, right? What are we moving to? Where are we going to, right? Okay. First, I'm introduction. Okay. I'm reading the person. Do they want to talk a little more? Are they open? Oh, hey. Hey, Marquez. Yeah. What you got? You hear the tone loud, what you got? Oh, okay, man, not too much, just here at home, you know, getting some work done, trying to stay safe from COVID, <laughs> right? Or, he hello, yeah, what you want? Oh, okay, didn't want to take up too much of your time, man. Just sold a house in your area, wanted to see if I could help you out. You have to be able to read these situations. That's what the key is. And then you implement the tone to make sure that you're bringing it back. Now, on this next call, we're gonna overcome the fact that they're not selling and the fact that they have an agent. Let's get into it. Hey, listen. Yeah. Yeah, this is Mark Branson. I'm a realtor over here in Mansfield. Did I catch you with a bad time? Mm -hmm. Listen to that spiel. Hey, this is Mark. I'm a realtor over here in Mansfield. Did I catch you with a bad time? Now, let's listen to how she responds. It's gonna let us know if we need to talk about the weather, if we need to talk about being safe from COVID, just getting some work done, or if we need to skip that and get straight to the point. I'm working, but if you're asked. Which one do you think we should do in this in this scenario? Get straight to the point, right? But listen to what she says next. You mean if I'm gonna sell my house and- No ma'am, I'm no. not trying to get you to buy or sell a thing. Did you see how I cut her off in the middle of that, right? It shows authority. It shows that I'm sure of myself and I'm sure that I'm not trying to buy or sell your house, right? And again, that starts to pique their interest because nobody does that, right? When usually when people call and trying to buy or sell their house, they're not saying, no, I'm not trying to buy or sell your house, right? Nobody ever does that. So it's a pattern interrupt. Really key, really key. Um, I actually just sold the house over there in the neighborhood and you know, just wanted to mm -hmm. call you guys and see if I can help out in any way straight into the transition, right? We skipped the pleasantries, hey, just trying to stay safe from COVID, straight into it because we had a pattern interrupt her. It means get straight to the point. You said you what? You sold the house in the neighborhood. Yeah, uh-huh. No, I'm not interested in selling my house. <laughs> okay, yeah, I'm just, I'm asking to see if you guys need any help with anything in real estate. Uh, no. Gotcha, okay, okay, okay. Transition. Well, in the future, if anything, you know, ever changes for you five, maybe 10 years from now, do you have a good realtor that you work with? Now, again, I'm asking this to see and gauge if they really have a realtor. So there's going to be a couple of different answers you're going to get. No, I don't have a realtor. Yes, I have a realtor. And I'm going to show you what I say to that. That's what you're going to get. Or, well, you know, I'm not, I'm not selling my house because I don't want to. Okay. Okay. I got you. And listen to what I say back to what she says. Yes. You do? Okay, okay. What's the name? I might know. Now, the reason I am saying that is to really get a gauge of if this person really has a realtor, right? Or they're just saying something. Because what will happen is when I say, okay, what's the name? I might know him. Uh, I can't remember. Exactly, right? Perfect. Okay. They also, what they'll say is they'll have their, they'll know their name. They'll either say their name. It'll be like, Leslie, uh, what's her last name? What's her last name, right? Again, this whoever whoever her realtor is is not doing the best best job of staying in front because all my clients should know my name. You know what I mean? Because they're getting a weekly email from me 
every week. And then if it's a past client, they definitely should know my name, right? Again, this is where really listening to the tone and understanding what's going on comes in handy, right? And so at that point, even if they say they have a realtor, you can tell when they have, you know, a solidified realtor and whatnot, they have somebody in place. You can tell when they're just um, just trying to get on the phone or if they can't even remember the last realtor's name, then that's still an opportunity for you to collect their email. You never know where it's gonna come from or when it's gonna happen, but watch what I do to turn this around. Laura Baumgarten, Baumgarten. Oh, okay. Gotcha, gotcha, okay, yeah, you're in great hands, absolutely, okay. Oh, okay, yeah, absolutely, you're in great hands, absolutely. Do you think I know who Laura Baumgarten is? I have no clue, not the slightest, right? But, I'm. oh, okay, yeah, you're in great hands, absolutely, right? And then, my next phrase is what's really key. Watch what I say. You right. heard of her? <laughs> I have. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, I've been in this business a, a while, and I'm, you know, starting to see some agents start to retire. Um, would it be a crazy idea if we stayed in touch? And who knows? Maybe keep me as a backup or something. Bam. So we're gonna spit facts to her. Ninety percent of real estate agents fail. Most of them don't last very long in the business, right? So hey, I'm starting to see a lot of agents retire right? Whenever you get ready to buy or sell or do anything with this house, who knows when it's going to be? It could be five years from now, right? Do we know if Lara ba Laura Baumgartner is going to be selling real estate at that time? Can you be rest assured of that? No, they can't because she hadn't even talked to Laura. She don't even know what Laura, what Laura's doing nowadays, right? Pandemic has hit, shut all kind of business down. So she has no idea if she's even still practicing real estate, right? And so I don't want it to seem like I'm stepping on Laura's toes, but at the same time, I'm gonna at least collect the data and send my weekly email to this person over the long run. And you never know, she might have a friend that might wanna send, that she might wanna send to me. Maybe she works with Laura, but her sends her friend to me, you never know. So again, what I'm gonna say is, okay, well, hey, maybe, you know, would it be a crazy idea if we stayed in touch and just keep me as a backup, right? I want to be the backup to Laura. Because in my mind, if Laura's not there, which most likely she's not going to be, I'm next up, right? And that's where we want to be. <laughs> I have no intention on selling my house. Like, gotcha. for real. Yeah, none. <laughs> so, <laughs> I appreciate the call. You might want to pick up a rental property. You never know. Maybe you need to help somebody get a lease. Who knows? <laughs> If you want to send me an email with your contact information or a text message, that'll be fine. Like I, I'm, I'm, I do come across people coming into the area a lot, always yeah. looking for places to live. I do come across people in the area always looking for places to live. Does that sound like that's a one-time occurrence for her? No, it sounds like she's been helping people find places to live because she knows people moving to Texas. How many people do you think know people that are moving to Texas these days? Exactly. So why would you not at least try, right? All they can say is no, right? I'm not stepping on Laura's toes. I don't want to be Laura. I don't want to be her realtor. I want to be her friend's realtor. And that's what I'm doing. I'm positioning myself to be top of mind whenever the next person that comes in town is looking to lease a property or maybe wants to buy a property, they're going to call me. Okay. Yeah. I'll, shoot you, I'll shoot you an email. What's a good email for you? Leslie, it's... Bam, email closed. So guys, I appreciate you guys watching, man. If you have any questions, any comments, shoot them in the comments section. As always, I definitely appreciate, man. The, the channel is growing so fast, man. I think we're up to 730, 740 subscribers right now. Uh, it's going bonkers and I appreciate the love. Um, if you guys will, go ahead and hit that subscribe button, turn your notifications on so you know when I drop new videos. And as always, stay beastly.